Hello, this is Tom Pizzuti with Trading the Mark. And today I thought we would get caught up on crude oil, like how it's been working out since we last talked. So let's get caught up again. Let's start with the weekly chart first. On the weekly chart, as we spoke last time, uh, I think the overall pattern here from these highs back early in 2022 is that we're setting up a large corrective pattern for a wave two and that so far we've had a wave a, a print and I'm calling that parentheses a degree labels are somewhat subjective doesn't matter looking for a, a overall a very large three wave move decline for a two um, so far we've had the move down in a had a three way bounce in a B and we're sort of early into this next pattern, whatever that may look like now for, for right now, I am making a guess that the end, the end of this pattern here, this C wave will be an ending diagonal. We don't know. It's too early to know for sure if it's going to look like that. In fact, the next, I don't know, few weeks um, should clear that up for us. If if it's going to be an ending diagonal, um, an ending diagonal will allow this third wave bounce to be higher than what it would normally would be if we were expecting a sort of a conventional impulse wave here. Uh, if we are getting a uh, conventional imp impulse wave, this bounce is a wave four, and that wave four wouldn't overlap very much, uh, if at all, with this uh, initial move down. And that'll be easier to see on the daily chart when I move on to that. But anyway, right now, my idea is that uh, crude is already kind of sensing the um, worldwide sort of recession. Uh, I do think that the uh, oil producers are trying to get out in front of that. In fact, we'll talk about that a little bit later, a little bit later. And, uh, you know, the, the rest of the markets will get caught up on that fact later. But definitely, I think oil is already starting to anticipate a slowdown. However, I've seen some people talk about uh under 30, uh, under the 30 handle for even even lower for uh, crude next year or the year after that. I just think that that's probably going to be uh, very unrealistic. Um, I think that getting down into this 3940 area would be a gift. I I doubt that it gets that far, but we'll see. Um, and I think it's much more likely that we would get somewhere in this, say, this 53 to 4590 area, uh, kind of a test of the uh, prior lower degree fourth. So something, something back in here, I think, is realistic. Basically, anywhere between the mid 40s to the, you know, low to mid 50s is a realistic price uh, for a pullback. But, you know, I suppose everything could crater and it could go lower. But I, again, I I don't, wouldn't look forward to that. We'll see what happens in six months where we are. But anyway, moving on, let's take a look at the daily chart. On a daily chart, you could see that we've had this initial decline, um, a bounce up. Um, and a decline with five waves that's uh, pretty easy to see, you know, one down, uh, kind of essentially a sideways move in two, a drop in three, a quick little bounce in four, didn't have any overlap with one, and a drop down to a new low. And that this whole move right here, uh, I'm, again, using the primary hypothesis of a ending diagonal. And an ending diagonal is a special kind of um, way of of uh, five wave moves, so to speak. But the but the five moves in inside of it are all going to be made of threes. So 
an ABC, a three, and that is one of the ending diagonal. There'll be a three wave bounce in wave two, and then the, after that would be a three wave move down in three. So you end up with a, a pattern that's all made out of threes as opposed to being made out of of five, three, five, three, five as an example uh, as, for a conventional impulse. But as I was saying earlier, we don't know for sure if it's going to be an ending diagonal at this point. Again, that's just a, a, a hypothesis that I have that kind of lets the one would let this uh, current bounce bounce up ab above this um, initial impulse here. Uh, this first low here would be able to go up over 79.41 without breaking any kind of rules. Um, and then, uh, you know, how far up it gets, we don't know yet. In fact, I don't think it has to go very high. Uh, could stall out uh, in this 79 kind of area to 81.30 and then reverse lower. And that would be, I would start counting that initially as the early part of a wave three. Again, we won't know for sure, but that could be construed as being a wave four and then the move down being a wave five. This is somewhat academic at this point. All that, all that will end up telling us is to what future movement will look like um, later on in the in the upcoming you know months. In the re relatively short term, uh, the moves uh, uh, whether we count this as as in, uh, working on an initial five wave down um, or as an ending diagonal. It's not going to make that much difference. So I probably have already spent too much time on it. So we'll move on. On the sh intraday chart, we could see that this is it was interesting here on Wednesday in that crude um, started to st uh, st initially stalled out uh, just above the 7760 resistance level. And then uh, dropped um, pretty sharply. We had the EIA numbers on Wednesday morning. Had a, a quick drop. Tested an old resistance at 75.65. That old resistance become uh, becomes supports. And then launched back and recovered by the end of the day. Uh, that recovered 7760 and here we are in the very early hours of thursday it's starting to poke over that so definitely an, an interesting day in crude um started off weak and then um had a very sharp uh recovery and this is all i think uh positioning and some a little bit of, of news starting to leak out about uh, this um, new OPEC, this, uh, excuse me, OPEC plus meeting that is taking place today. Uh, there's people talk about that, you know, certainly the Saudis would like to see um, cutbacks um, pretty much trying to get ahead of any kind of recession um, and whether or not the whole group will be able to approve that or not, we don't know yet. I'm going to guess that um, there are going to that they will end up agreeing on some production cutbacks, and that will allow um, WTI here, the CL, to probably pop above 77.60 as it as it is, and um, either push for 78.65 or 79.50 here in the very short term. And if at some point you, we see a re, you see a reversal today, um, certainly if it were to follow under 76, 77.60, but the real important number is 76.70. If at some point it drops underneath 76.70, then I would say this wave two correction up is over with and that we are starting some type of impulse down. 
again, whether that is the beginning of wave three, as I postulate here, or if this is a, a fourth wave and it's moving down in a wave five and wave one will end up being moved over to the right, you know, we'll see. But from a from someone playing um, crude on a short term, you know, day trading basis really doesn't matter. What matters is that while you're above 7760, probably play for higher. Um, and, you know, how high, it all depends on what the news looks like. But, you know, any kind of spikes um, it could definitely follow through all the way up into the 8035 or even 8120, depending on the news. But if you start to see it start to fall apart after testing one of these levels, um, then keep an eye on 7670 afterwards as your uh, principal support. And if that breaks, then you, the bullish um, the bullish uh, trade is over with and we're going to start a bearish trade after that. All right, that's all I had to say. I hope you all have a good rest of the week and I'll see you next time.